YouTube channel. I'm glad you've chosen to join me today. I hope it's fun for both of us. It will certainly be fun for me because I am playing with toys today. I'm here today to give you a few ideas on how you can tell if any toy is going to be encouraging of developing communication skills. Number one, we want to find out if there are characters in this toy or playset. We need to have people or animals or vehicles that can interact with each other because when we can interact, we can do pretend conversations, we can do social skills, we can have the toys help each other, we can have somebody be a bad guy and have to go to jail or have to have some time away from the group in order to calm down so we can model things that might be happening in the child's own life. We want characters. They don't have to be human. And in fact, sometimes it's easier for our kids with social difficulties to practice social skills with characters that are not human. For example, with trains or with other vehicles or with animals. Although there are some students who are usually on the autism spectrum who really hate the idea of anything talking or communicating that is not a human being. I had a little student who refused to look at cartoons, refused to play with toys where the characters were animals or vehicles because they're not human, they don't talk, and they shouldn't talk. They should only be what they are. He was so rigid in his belief system around who should be and shouldn't be talking that he was unable to be flexible in the area of play. And we would try to work on that but in those cases, you might have to start out with human characters, just so you know. Number two, does the toy speak for the child? We want to eliminate that. If the toy does speak for the child, such as having the animals make all the different sounds or saying the alphabet or just there are so many toys that parents think are really cool because they'll teach the kid these things, the only problem is that the child is then not motivated to produce those sounds and words and noises herself. And we want her to be motivated to produce the sounds herself. You can start off teaching those things with this toy and then take the batteries out. Or you can take the batteries out right from the beginning and you are the prompt. So when the zebra comes out, you say, zebra, hello there, zebra rather than her putting the toy by the picture and the picture saying zebra. That's not very interactive, it isn't very fun, and it isn't the best sort of learning experience that we could provide. Number three, how many different actions can the characters do? There should be a lot. They should be able to eat, sleep, jump, swim, run, slide, spin, swing, cook. There should be a lot of different things that these characters can do. And even just keeping a list of that in your head will sort of help you as you're playing with your child. And that's going to be my next video, how to play with your child or a student. As you're playing with the child, a list of these different verbs, action words, nearby might help you remember, oh yes, we need to have the characters doing things. We need to practice doing things sort of language, like Thomas runs or Junie jumps. Those kind of phrases are really important for language development. And we want to be able to have the characters themselves talking. That would be in our funny voices. I am running. I am swimming. We use funny voices, we pretend to be the characters. We need to have a lot of different things our characters can do that we can talk about. And remember, it doesn't have to be people. So yes, a doll house is not a bad thing to have in your house, whether your child is a boy or a girl. However, if your child likes bears instead, your bears can do all of the same things that the dolls could do. Even little G.I. Joe guys can do all the same stuff. They don't have to just fight. 
They can also help each other. They can also eat and sleep and jump and run and drive a truck. All of the things that human beings do that we need to talk about. Any plaything can do those things. We just have to remember to be flexible in the ways that we play with the different toys and in the behaviors and language that we model while we are playing. We want to be able to link the characters not only to their actions, but also to the pronouns that should be used by them and about them. So Allison is running, that's one of our little toys. She is running. She looks at Albert. He is sleeping. So we're talking about the characters using their name, but also linking it to the pronoun and also mixing it up using the name plus the action word, using the pronoun plus the action word. We want to mix it up like a big bowl of soup. We want this to be very language rich. So we need lots of characters and we need lots of action words. That's what we're going for. It also helps if there is a bad guy, somebody who can be in trouble all the time and need to take a break or go to jail or talk out his feelings or whatever it is that you're trying to work on with the child in question. That works really well. Sometimes the child will keep replaying that scenario of the person or the animal or the vehicle being super naughty and then having to go to jail for a few minutes or to, uh, usually I have a little barn a toy that has a silo and I have one little guy in my classroom right now who has a lot of problems managing his behaviors especially around his peers and so what we play with him with the the other farm animals or with vehicles or with our alien playset we let one guy do the behaviors that this child himself is doing and then all the characters rally and say that's not okay you need some time to calm down. Go in the silo. And so he helps his little character get over there into the silo and we shut the door and we count down. And when he's all done, he says, I'm done. Or we say, no, one more minute. However it works out, we play act that with this character. So it really can help your child's social development, but it also makes it more fun. As you can see with the castle that I'm showing you right now, there's a dragon. The dragon has a big smile on her face, but we often pretend that she is a bad dragon who's trying to steal the horses and eat the people and take all their food and start things on fire. And it's really fun for kids to have something to rally around. So for example, if I'm playing with my little friend Beatrice, and she's just not very engaged. I bring the dragon and I go, ah, ah, here comes the dragon. And then I take the queen and say, oh no, the dragon is coming. What should we do? And usually a child is really sucked in by that sort of tragedy and disaster lurking right around the corner. And she will usually use some words to tell me run or hide or jump in the moat whatever the child thinks might be a good way to get away from the dragon. And it builds rapport between us, it builds fun and relationship, and language develops out of those things. We also want the toy to be able to be flexible. We want the children to be able to play in more than one way with that particular toy. I can work with the train set where the train just goes around and around, but I don't let the train just go around and around. A tree falls across the track and the engines have to work together to move the tree. Or the track breaks and Sir Topham Hat has to come along and help the engines figure out what to do about it. It's not just about the sensory experience of letting your child experience the train going around and around and around. That's not play, that's a sensory experience, which is good for its own purposes but it's not interactive and it's not play. We wanna look for sets or toys or equipment that allows children to play that it's raining and the people have to find a good way to protect themselves when it's wet. Or there's a dragon coming 
or it's time for school and we need to get ready for school. It's time to eat dinner and we need to eat dinner. Maybe the aliens go off exploring planets sometimes and other times they come home and they talk to the astronauts about what they saw on their travels. There are a lot of different opportunities for toys like a space station playset with aliens, like a dollhouse, like the castle that I've been showing you. These kind of playsets offer a lot of different flexible scenarios that your child can act on. Look for rocks, take pictures of stars, fly to Mercury, eat, talk to aliens, feed dog, drive space buggy, sit in moon crater. There's all these different things that this toy is capable of doing and any one of them we can talk about it, we can create shared language and memory on that issue. My very last hint for you is, is the child going to like it? A lot of times at the very beginning of working on play skills, the child needs some sort of a hook to get him interested in the toy and in interacting with me because people have been sort of a threat to him in the past and social interactions are not as easy for him as they are for a typically developing child. In this case, we want to have some sort of thing about this toy that is going to appeal specifically to that child. And you never know exactly what it's going to be. Sometimes it's a propeller that spins and we can talk about how we need to start the airplane going, so let's spin the propeller. Oh, it's going, now we stop it. And the child doesn't, we don't just let the child sit there and spin the propeller the whole time. That's just part of what happens. But that one propeller might be enough to get the child involved. One of my kids loves elevators and escalators and I have a space station that has an elevator going from one floor to another and we lure him into playing with us by the fact that this toy has an elevator and yet at the same time we don't let him just up and down up and down up and down the elevator we have to put people in and then they have to get out and they have to talk to each other and they have to do things the people need to be doing things, not just sitting, not just going up and down, not just driving around in the car. They need to interact with each other. That's the whole goal, is that play has characters interacting with each other in a way that is meaningful and fun. It needs to be fun. The kind of play we're looking for is the type where characters interact with each other, communicate with each other, and where the child and I can have fun together doing stuff with these toys. Sometimes it might be that the characters are a particular type, maybe Thomas the Tank Engine or maybe Daniel Tiger. You find a Daniel Tiger playset and that is something that's alluring to the child. Maybe it's a particular genre like oceans or uh, space, whatever the case may be, maybe cowboys. If you can find something that appeals to that particular child, even better. I've noticed that a lot of times the way that I approach the child, the way that I approach the toy is how the child sees it. So if I think it's really fun, if I show the child all the really cool different ways that we can play with any particular toy, usually the child is much more interested even if it's not a toy that she would play with on her own. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to find toys that will encourage emerging communication skills. If you have questions, leave them down below, and I would love to know which toys you have found that have really encouraged communication for your child. I will put links to some of my favorites down below, and I hope they're helpful to you. See you in my next video. Bye.